Hello, I'm Bobby Saffron, AARP Louisiana Volunteer State President. If we remember last winter, we did have an unusual freeze. Who knows what our winter season will bring us this year, so it's best to be prepared for anything. Today, I'm speaking with Karen McCoy, the North Louisiana Executive Director for the American Red Cross, and we'll be discussing cold weather preparedness. Karen, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation and help us get this important information to our members. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about cold weather preparedness, especially based off what happened last year. Exactly. So thinking back to last year, to last February, when we experienced such an unusually cold week with uh, frozen pipes and down trees and power outages, among other things, what are some lessons that we learned for our, our area uh, from that unusual event? Well, you know, we learned a lot from that, actually. Um, Louisiana is no stranger to disaster. I mean, we're used to hurricanes, we're used to tornadoes, we're used to flooding. Cold weather is not one we're typically used to. And so um, we learned a lot. One thing that I want everybody to take to heart is when you hear these severe weather warnings, take them seriously. Um, you know, don't think that, oh, that's just not going to happen or, oh, they got it wrong that time. Let's take them seriously. And then the second thing we definitely want to do is to prepare. That's one of our big mottos with the Red Cross is preparation for these events. And so, um, you know, there are several ways that uh, you can prepare. And I, I know behind me, I have actually an emergency preparedness kit that um, the Red Cross has. Um, we have a list of things that you can put in your own kit and prepare um, yourself and have at home for, for times like these. And that's things just such as flashlights, batteries, um, you know, a, a way to charge your uh, phone with a battery operated device, um, water, food, um, stuff of that nature. So a big thing is to be prepared and to take these uh, weather warnings seriously. Absolutely. Sometimes we get a little complacent uh, with the weather warnings. We think that, you know, the news media makes a big deal out of something and then nothing happens. And then, you know, right. the next time is, you know, we expect nothing to happen and then something uh, big does happen. And AARP has similar uh, preparedness kits that uh, from time to time and, you know, our, our uh, I guess, response is more uh, noticeable after a, a hurricane or a flood, but, you know, important papers and you know, some of the little things that we don't often think about and sometimes packing a, a go bag, you know, to, yep. uh, to have it ready. So so when it's cold out, you know, many of us use uh, space heaters and and other things uh, to keep warm. And what should what do you think we should do to make sure we're, we're being safe and that we don't cause a fire? Well, that's very, very important, especially when using space heaters. Um, the potential for fire is is obviously increased. And what people may not realize is the number one disaster that we respond to are single family fires. And they the uptick is dramatic during the winter months because people are using stuff such as space heaters and alternate ways of, of heating their home. So if you are using a space heater, Keep it away from, um, you know, blankets or anything at least three feet away from, you know, whether it's curtains, blankets, your bed. Um, also, don't cover up the cord. Don't put a rug on top of it. Don't put a blanket on top of the cord. Um, plug it directly into the wall. Don't plug it into a power strip. And when you're done using it and you're going to bed or you're heading out of your house, um, unplug it from the wall before you leave. Um, so just being very diligent with um, with the space heaters and, and, and doing those few things can really help prevent the risk of, of starting a fire. You know, people don't often think about it, but extension cords, and it's one of the things that we don't focus on that much. We had a case several years ago where a, a, a large extension cord, a long extension cord, 100 feet plus, was used to power uh, a piece of electrical equipment. And it was rolled up under a bed. Cool. It over, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in this matter, but uh, apparently having it coiled up like that caused uh, uh, an issue where it ignited, it ignited the bed and burned down the house. So, you know, and, and you don't hear much about uh, safe handling of extension cords. They're very good in some circumstances, but you need to use the right cord for the right purpose and, and, right. and don't, don't abuse it. Yeah. 
So, you know, and occasionally uh, we see that uh, power goes out and it, it looks like it might be for no apparent reason. So w what should we do if the power goes out uh, during the winter months? Well, that's what these these kits that we're talking about is very important that if the power goes out, that you have a kit available. The number one thing we need is food and water. So non-perishable food and, and water. So what, that's part of your kit items, you know, is that you have those non-perishable food. You're going to need the old school can opener, not the electric one, because we're not going to have power. So be sure you have the old school can opener to open it. Um, you know, again, flashlights, uh, batteries. Um, stuff of that nature that you would have in your kit in order to um, be able to um, function without um, electricity. Again, you know, we all use our cell phones now. Um, and if we can't plug it in a wall to charge it, you better have a battery operated charger for your for your phone or, um, you know, that, that stops all of our worlds at this point. So have that preparedness kit available. So, so important, you know, when, when a disaster strikes, if you're not prepared, it's too late to get prepared. Yep. You know, so these are the kinds of things that uh, we ought to have ready to go in a moment's notice if we've got to go. That's right. So uh, another thing, we know that uh, people use generators when the power goes out. Yep. And uh, we also know that people get sick. Uh, they could end up in the emergency room. And they may even die when those generators are used on appro inappropriately. So when it comes to generator safety, what are some generator safety considerations that we should remember? Um, make sure that you have that generator on a dry surface. Um, preferably, we'd like some type of canopy, open canopy over it with a tarp like on poles. Um, make sure you're not touching that generator with wet hands. Um, when you're going to refuel that generator, make sure it's turned off and it's cooled down because if you get some of that gasoline on some of those hot engine parts, it could um, ignite a fire. Um, plug the appliances directly into the generator. A lot of people want to try to um, run their whole house off of that generator and then uh, plug it into the house wiring, plugging into appliances, and then that ignites, um, you know, can cause a fire. Um, so those are a few of the things that you can do to help prevent injuries or cause fires and stuff of that nature with the generators. Yeah, you know, for, for generators, you don't need to be an engineer, but you ought to certainly take... Uh, some some simple steps and and those are great reminders for people you know if, if they're going to be using uh generators and you know some some of these generators come self-contained if they're a whole house but not every generator is a whole house generator and, right you know, i have a a portable and just like you said i have a a tent over mine to protect it uh, from the rain and i have it several feet away from the house so that the exhaust doesn't make its way into the house plus I have a, a carbon monoxide uh, detector just in the event that uh, something like that would happen. And, you know, it'll wake me up before I can't wake up and I can go outside and shut the thing down if, if I have to. Yep. So uh, talking about a, a possible uh, winter storm, in our homes, uh, sometimes uh, repairs may be necessary if uh, pipes freeze. And, mm -hmm. and when those pipes thaw out, the home might be flooded. So what are some of the things that we should consider to avoid uh, cost of repairs or to find help in the event that for some reason that damage couldn't be avoided? Right. Well, we definitely want to prevent it from happening if at all possible. And so, you know, small things can help with that. That's, you know, opening your cabinet doors in your kitchen that have plumbing or in your bathroom so that they can have the heat circulating through there. Um, if you have any type of piping or, or plumbing in your garage, keep your garage door shut. Um, always keep your, your heat on at a certain temperature day and night. Um, if you have to go out of town, don't completely turn your heat off. Um, you know, keep it, keep it on at, at a minimum at 55 degrees. And the one thing we've all heard is to, you can let your faucets drip, especially if there's exposed pipes there, just a small drip of cold water can help prevent it, um, from freezing. So those are just awesome things that, um, you could put in place to help try to prevent those, those pipes from bursting. You know, I, I think what, what you're mentioning are just simple steps that uh, people can take 
and it's commonsensical type stuff. Yeah. You, we don't need an engineer or a, a plumber to, to make these uh, small changes. And, and in the end, it could end up saving us a lot of money and heartache and headache. Yeah. So uh, w where can people find resources or more information about cold uh, weather preparedness? And I'm thinking Red Cross or maybe some other organizations that uh, can help folks with uh, cold weather preparedness. Definitely, we have a lot of information on our website. So that's redcross.org, redcross.org. Um, you can click on that link and go to it, and we'll have all the items that you should put in an emergency kit. We're going to have all the cold uh, cold weather preparedness activities um, that you can do. Um, so definitely, our resource is to go to our website and review all of those materials, um, especially with the upcoming cold weather um, if you find yourself in a situation where um, you've had some major disaster occur or you need help, um, you can actually dial 211 from a Louisiana phone and they have a list of resources. In other words, a bunch of different um, groups of, uh, you know, nonprofits and partnerships that all help in different capacities. So that's another option um, if you end up having some, um, you know, uh, disaster related damage. We will uh, we will put that information on the screen uh, for people to refer to uh, redcross.org and uh, 211 in the event that, you know, there's they, danger. Miss, yeah, they miss it during the presentation and then they can go back and, and refer uh, to those. So let, let me uh, you know, we're uh, we're winding down here. I, I think we uh, tried to get uh, several high points that uh, are, are helpful uh, to people and you've been a, a great resource and provided some uh, good information. And so in, in, in closing and wrapping up, any final comments uh, before we conclude? Um, and not that I can think of right now. I just really appreciate you guys allowing us to come on. Um, I think this is vitally important. Um, it, you know, after the events of last February, um, it's, you know, it's not, doesn't happen to everybody else. It can happen right here to us. Um, and so it's it's something that we need to take seriously. So thank you for having having me on. Oh, it's our pleasure, and we're happy to uh, to to pick your brain and get mm -hmm. the information that we need to get out to our, our members. And, and while we don't always often uh, encounter intense cold weather, uh, the the key is preparation, and I think that's what mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, throughout our, our conversation here. So on behalf of AARP Louisiana and our members across the state. Uh, we certainly thank you for taking the time to talk with me ahead of the winter season. And it's appropriate now that we have a little breathing room uh, to get prepared and for offering these uh, tips and resources on uh, cold weather preparedness. To our viewers on behalf of AARP Louisiana and the American Red Cross, thank you for joining us. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay prepared. <music>